And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Smash Up Munchkin. Now this is a expansion for Smash Up, but it's also a standalone game. So maybe you're here to find out about Smash Up in general. Well, I'm not going to be actually teaching the game in this uh, review. If you want a full review of Smash Up, just go look at my original review of Smash Up, and that will tell you about the game. I'm just going to look at this as an expansion. But if you're here because you like Munchkin, well, congratulations. You're going to find a game that I think has a very similar idea to Munchkin. In fact, when I heard of Smash Up and Munchkin were crossing, I was like, oh, that makes sense. I do not like Munchkin, okay? But I feel like Smash Up has the spirit of Munchkin and does so in a fun way. This has eight different factions that you are going to smash up to mix two together. You have the wizards, and you have elves, and you have dwarves, and you have orcs, and you have fighters, and clerics, and thieves. I think I got everything, but there's also treasures and monsters. For those of you who've played Smash Up before, these guys mix seamlessly with the old stuff and add a couple new things. Let me show you. So first we're going to look here at the bases of this game and there's, you know, here's a tree house and a garrison and dimensional doors. But the thing about each of these bases is that they have monsters on them. Now the way this works is when I draw a base, so let's say I draw the gauntlet, it says three monsters. So another deck of cards, which is monster cards, I'm going to draw three monsters and place those here. So Bigfoot, Poultry Geist and the web troll are there. Now these act as regular minions. So for example, here there's set, they have a seven power, and they also have different things. If he's the only monster here, Bigfoot is plus three, he's not. Uh, this one's undead, and this monster is plus one power for each other undead monster there, so there's none. This one says, play another monster here. Oh, here's a ghoul. He's an undead, so now this guy's in a plus one power. So this is a lot of monsters on one spot. There's, you know, there's going to be ones that give fewer monsters. At the birthday party, only one monster will show up. And maybe it's the Hippogriff or the Plutonium Dragon. Some of the monsters are big and other monsters are small. Night of the Living Dead is a big one. And then we have the small ones I've already showed you. And King Tut is a big one. And there's multiples of the different monsters in the game. Now, if you're the one who kills a monster through a card or something, all the monsters, except for that web troll, give treasure. You'll notice here the Hippogriff gives a treasure. For that, you're going to pull off a treasure deck. And the treasure deck has many different cards in it. And essentially, these are cards you can put in your hand that you can then use. So they work for you. But once you're done using them, when they're discarded, they go to the treasure discard pile. So these are kind of like random cards you can get. So for example here, it's a minion that you can play another minion here. Um, here, I can give someone the boots of really running fast. That minion can move to another base. Or I can play this on a minion and he can use the talent of another minion. This minion gets plus one power for each treasure card on it. The Chainsaw Bloody Dismemberment, which is a great name, gives that minion plus two power. Here I can put a Dwarf Hireling and he gets a treasure discard pile. A Buckler of Swashing, which this minion can't be destroyed. It'd be great to play that on the T-Rex. Um, here, choose a base and a faction. All minions there of that faction get plus two power until the end of this turn. The Potion of Idiotic Bravery, which gives one minion plus three power until the end of the turn. The Knee Pads of Allure, where all minions here get plus one power. And really, there's just a lot of names, a dungeon rule book, the wishing ring, the boots of butt kicking, the potion of line cutting, a tiger steed, etc. And these are really cool. And these are treasure cards, but the treasure cards are only going to come into effect through these locations and through possibly some of the new factions. So let's take a look at some of these new factions. First, we have the thief faction here. 
Uh, now these factions, this faction is based all around the treasures. So even if you're using uh, the deck and you're, uh, you're using all the locations and treasures are going to get diluted, if you use these guys, you basically have an extra deck of cards you're going to be drawing stuff with. Here you draw a treasure card. They have a town of drawing a treasure card. Here when it's base scores, add two treasure cards to the reward. If there's another pickpocket here, draw a treasure card. You can discard two treasure cards to get a victory point. Choose a treasure card and play it. Place it in your hand. Reveal any number of treasure cards from your hand. Put a power counter on this minion for each one you revealed. Choose a minion. Discard a treasure card to give that minion plus three power until the end of the turn. So if you choose the thieves, obviously their specialty is all about manipulating treasures. They're not the only ones. The dwarves also have that. Here you can see the dwarf king and the loot lover. And this guy here, when there's a treasure card and the minions goes to the discard pile, put it in your hand instead. And this guy here gets plus two for each treasure card on him. This guy destroy an action played on a minion. If it's a treasure card, you can play an extra action. Discard in any number of cards. Draw a treasure for each one you discard. Play up the three treasure cards from your hand as extra cards. Place a treasure card from your discard pile into your hand. If this minion has a treasure card on a plus two power, draw a treasure card or place a treasure card from the discard pile in your hand. You can play an extra action. This guy search a treasure deck for a card. It can be played on a minion. Ah! Okay, so if you really want some cool things, mix the dwarves with the thieves. If you like treasure, and I know some people are going to, then mix those two together. All right. Now let's look at guys who work around the monsters. First we have the wizards. Play a monster on each base. <laughs> You're just summoning monsters. Play on a base. Discard a card to play a monster here. Here take control of a monster and treat it as one of your minions. That one's a lot of fun. Especially with some of the really cool monsters. Wizards do other things too. Draw until you have five cards in your hand. Discard a card to give this minion plus two power. Discard a card to destroy a minion of power two or less. Blaster Master, which is a great name. And he's pretty powerful as a five. Discard a card to destroy a minion of power three or less. And this guy can discard a card and draw a card. So the wizards aren't all about monsters. They also, you know, can do some things, cast their spells. But hey, speaking of monsters, we also then have the, uh, the next group, the warriors. Here we have this one. You play in your minion. When he goes to discard pile, he gets back. This is one of my favorite cards in the game at this point. I like this. To put it on someone, when they die, they come back. This guy here gets a plus one power counter every time he kills a monster. Each of your minions on a base that has a monster gets plus two power. Destroy a monster or play a monster here. Destroy a monster. You may play any treasures you get from destroying it. Place a monster on a base or destroy a minion of power two or less. Choose a base. Play two monsters there or destroy all monsters there but don't get any treasure cards. Destroy a monster with power less than or equal to this minion to place a plus one power counter on this minion. And you can play a monster here. So essentially this deck, which is based around monsters, lets you play monsters and then kill them for benefits. Um, I like these, I like the treasure guys I think better than these. But anyway, that's this group. All right, let's move on to the guys who are not necessarily built around the monsters and the treasures. So we'll start here with the clerics. Now, I honestly thought the clerics were gonna all be about healing, but instead, they're essentially talking about here, if you discard piles at least five cards, you get two of them back. All minions get plus one power. This minion adds no power to the bases on. So they do good things to themselves and bad things to others. Here's one about destroying an undead monster there, which has something. I wish it had said something like undead minion, like it'd be really fun if the cleric could would do good against the ghosts here. Shuffle a card from your discard pile into your deck. Play on a minion, this minion loses its abilities. Destroy an action on a base or a minion. Yeah, you know, honestly, I thought the clerics were kind of blase. They're not that interesting. I like the color of their cards, but well, I'm sure someone will beat me with the clerics, but I didn't find them as especially cool. Then we have the orcs. Place a minion of power four less on the bottom of its owner's deck. That's annoying, and it has a cool name, Death Breath. Here's a minion can't be affected by their player's actions. This guy's a five and his talent is do nothing. I'm not, I'm not really sure if that's supposed to be funny. I, 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 don't, I don't get that one or not. Choose a base and a player who has fewer minions than you, destroy one of their minions, move a minion to a base where you have two minions. Suddenly you realize that the orcs here, you can get a lot of orcs in one place. Destroy a minion of power two or less. Each of your other minions has plus one power. Play when a base scores. If you have at least three more power than the runner-up, gain one victory point. Again, I'm going to say that these guys are kind of generic, the orcs. Then we have 
the halflings, which have a sausage as their thing. Now the halflings are very similar to the robots from the original game, where you can get extra ones. And I'm almost afraid to see halfling robots together because they're all about playing extra minions. Here, if someone has more power than you, play an extra minion here. Uh, play on a base. After each time you play a minion here, draw a card. You can play an extra minion here. You can play an extra minion on a base where you have no minions. Play on a base. After each time you play a minion here, draw a card. We already mentioned that one. Here, play an extra minion on a base where another player has more power than you. Root Awakening. Choose a base. Reveal your cards and play all minions in it onto that base as extra minions. Cancel their abilities until the end of the turn. So you want to play a lot of guys quickly, you're going to like the Halflings. And I'm still thinking a Halfling Robot deck is going to be really vicious. And then the last faction is the Elves. Now the Elves have the interesting ability of helping other people that helps them, like the Philanthropist in Cosmic Encounter. Choose another player, they get plus two power, but then you get a minion who gets plus three power. You can put a plus one power on a counter to put a plus one power counter on one of your minions. Each other player draws a card, and then you draw a card for every other player in the game. Here, you give another player control of this minion until it leaves play, but you get to take control of one of their minions of power three or less. You give all your player minions here plus one power until the end of the turn. <laughs> um, so you can do that, which can actually, you can manipulate that to be useful. And then another player of your choice draws a card, draw a card. So these are the different factions that come with this set. This set also comes with some new tokens that match the, the, they show flowers and things like that on them. And it also comes with dividers so you can fit everything in the big geeky box. Speaking of the big geeky box, here it is with everything from Smash Up inside it at this point. And you can see that everything fits in almost one row. <laughs> so we got plenty more room. Still smashing the rule books up in here and have the tokens in the middle and some of the custom stuff for the game. But it all fits in very nicely. So there you have it. So there you go, that's what's in this box. Now, uh, again, I'm taking a look at this as an expansion. As, a, as, a, as someone's jumping into Smash Up, this is great. If you know someone who likes Munchkin, buy them this game. Teach them this great game, Smash Up. I really enjoy the game. Uh, as an expansion, I really like the monsters and the treasures. Now, it's funny, the rule book, for the first time I can think of, says, now you should be careful about mixing all the bases together because you'll basically dilute everything. And they mentioned the Cthulhu expansion, which is diluted if you do it. This one's going to be diluted too. However, I don't mind that. A few monsters and treasures showing up every once in a while, not a big deal. And if you really want to see the monsters and treasures, you can take one of the two factions that specifically concentrates on those. And I like that too. Um, in fact, I really like those factions. I like almost all the factions. I think there's, I, I mentioned there was a couple that were kind of generic, but I thought that the, the, the dwarves especially, I'm a big fan of. I think the elves are cool. They're gonna be, you're gonna find a lot of people who go, oh, they're not very good. But they're helping other people, but helping themselves better is a cool concept. And then you mix that with like the ninjas or something and stab them in the back. <laughs> um, like I said, the artwork fits in with the Smash Up artwork already. The theme fits in, and there's all kinds of cool combinations now. You can have uh, dwarf ghosts. You can have dinosaur clerics. You can have Russians riding bears or with or shapeshifters mixed with um, oh, orcs, shapeshifter orcs. I don't know. I, I like that. The, the combinations keep getting greater. I think this is a very solid version of the game. I think it's going to be cool. I like the addition of the of the treasures and min and monsters. They don't add too much complexity to the game and actually I think make the game go a little bit quicker. It just fits together so whether you're getting this as a base game or as an expansion to smash up as it is, certainly worth it in my opinion. Don't let don't let your if you're someone who like me is not a big fan of Munchkin, don't let and you like Smash Up like I'm not putting Munchkin. Guys, this fits in. You, if these came out, you wouldn't even notice. I mean, there's the Kavlik artwork type thing that maybe that would catch your eye, but you wouldn't notice these These make sense in the mix of things. Get it. Dice Tower Judgment, get to my collection. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Out the door. There. There.